Welcome back everybody to another one of my aviation history videos and this is going to be episode 10 in my history of the RCAF. So today we're going to be talking about 407 Squadron which was formed during World War II as a coastal command unit and is still operating today in that same role. But before I go too far into this, my name is Sean and this is Sean's Aviation. So 407 Squadron officially got its start on May 8th of 1941 at Thorny Island and was the RCAF's fourth unit formed overseas and its second to be formed for coastal command duties. It was formed as a coastal strike unit with Blenheim Mark IVs for training and no operational missions were flown with the Blenheims. The unit was assigned the squadron code RR. In June, the unit began to receive Hudson Mark III's and Mark V's and continued to train towards operational status. By July, all the Blenheims had been transferred to other units, and on July 9th, the unit moved to North Coates. On September 7th, the unit flew its first operational mission when three Hudsons were dispatched to search for a missing Whitley bomber, but nothing was seen. That same evening, a Hudson Mark V attacked a 1,500-ton motor vessel for the unit's first offensive sortie, although no hits were noted on the ship. On February 19th of 1942, the unit moved back to Thorny Island and continued to fly coastal strike missions along the French coast. On March 31st, it moved to Bertram Newton, and while there, in May, the Hudson 3s were withdrawn from service, leaving only the Hudson Mark 5s with the unit. On October 1st, they moved to St. Eval, and November 10th brought a move to docking, and they stayed here until early 1943. On January 23rd of 1943, the unit was redesignated as a coastal reconnaissance unit and began to re-equip with Wellington Mark 11s and transitions to anti-submarine missions. The Wellington Mark 11 was more or less a standard Wellington bomber with a radar in place of the bomb aiming window in the nose. At the same time, the unit changed its designator from RR to C1, although for the most part the aircraft only carried the number 1 with an individual aircraft letter on the fuselage. On February 9, 16th, the unit moved to Skitton, Scotland, and the first anti-submarine mission was flown on March 7th, but no sightings were made. Near the end of March, the unit began to receive their first Wellington Mark 12s, basically a Mark 11, with the nose turret removed and replaced by a single flexible machine gun. On April 1st, the unit moved to Chevenor and the last of the Hudson Mark 5s, as well as Wellington Mark 11s, were transferred out, leaving the unit to fly only the Wellington Mark 12. This did not last long, and in June, the first Wellington Mark 14s began to arrive. These were again, more or less like the Mark 12s, but had provisions for rockets fitted under the wings. On September 7th, the unit scored its first U-boat kill when Wellington HF-115 sank U-669 in the Bay of Biscay. On November 3rd, the unit relocated back to St. Eval and then back to Chevenor on December 2nd. On January 29th of 1944, the unit moved to Limvadi in Northern Ireland and was based there for three months, moving back to Chevenor on April 28th. At this time, the Wellington Mark 12s were retired and the unit flew the Wellington Mark 14 exclusively for the rest of the war. On August 24th, the unit moved to Wick before moving back to Chevenor on November 11th, staying here till the end of the war. Its last mission was flown on June 1st of 1945 when a Wellington, HF-302, flew a convoy escort mission. The unit was officially disbanded at Chevenor on June 4th, 1945. During World War II, the unit flew a total of 2,900 sorties, with 11,926 hours being flown on operational missions. The unit was credited with three aircraft destroyed and one probable. It dropped 173 tons of bombs and was credited with 10 ships sunk, four damaged, and two shared. They dropped 331 depth charges and was credited with four U-boats sunk and three damaged. The unit suffered 42 aircraft lost, with 24 killed and 151 presumed dead, eight POWs, and six who managed to evade capture. The post-war life of 407 Squadron started on July 1st of 1952 when the unit was activated at RCAF Station Comox as a Maritime Reconnaissance Unit and assigned the squadron code RX. It was equipped with Lancaster Mark 10s and flew anti-submarine patrols off the west coast. On July 17th, 1956, it was redesignated as a Maritime Patrol Unit but continued to fly the same type of mission. In May of 1958, the unit received their first Lockheed Neptune 
and by May of 1959, all the Lancasters were retired. With the transition to the Neptune, the unit dropped the RX code and only used aircraft numbers to identify the aircraft. As a side note, many of the Neptune aircraft received by 407 came from 404 and 405 squadrons at Greenworth, and many of the aircraft carried the previous codes of SP and VN while flying with 407 until they were repainted. The unit survived the reunification of the Canadian forces in 1968 and was renamed 407 Long Range Patrol Squadron and began to be re-equipped with the CP-107 Argus this same year. A noteworthy event for 407 was when, in 1974, a 407 Squadron Argus flew a patrol mission from Comox to the Aleutian and Islands and back, setting a record for the longest unrefueled flight by an aircraft at that time with a flight time of 31 hours, 6 minutes. In 1981, 407 Squadron began to convert to the CP-140 Aurora and has flown this aircraft ever since. It is a highly capable airframe that allows the squadron to fly both over water and over land reconnaissance, as well as anti-submarine and search and rescue patrols. The unit has flown anti-narcotics missions in the South and Central America, sanctions enforcement around North Korea, looking for illegal fishing in the Pacific Ocean, counter-smuggling patrols in the Indian Ocean, as well as enforcing sovereignty along the west and northern coasts of Canada. They have also taken part in anti-terrorism missions in the Middle East and North Africa since the attacks of 9-11. 407 Squadron with the CP-140 is a cornerstone in the RCAF's West Coast forces and is pivotal to the RCAF's ability to project its force overseas. With the new Block 4 CP-140 coming online soon, 407 Squadron will stay as the leading edge of long-range reconnaissance with the RCAF for many years to come. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.